Welcome to Tuesday Testimonials, where we explore the lives and commitment of the sons and daughters of USF. I'm Frank Alaco, and today I am most pleased to be here with Julie Kanji, one of the most beloved Dons in USF history. Julie, you know everyone in this city. I've known you for five years, and quite frankly, I was shocked when I heard that you were not a native San Franciscan. Tell me about your family and how you ended up in the Golden State. Well, um, Frank, I was born and raised in South Florida, um, the place of the sun and fun, and um, had a great time there. But um, at 23, I decided it was time for a change. And my sister, being a flight attendant for National Airlines at the time, kept having layovers in San Francisco. And she would come back and tell me these stories of how wonderful this place was. So convinced my mom to take a flight out with me to the West Coast and we explored San Francisco. Um, I fell in love with this city. Every corner was a photographer's delight. And I just so happened to have a friend from high school that was living out here at the time. So I packed it up, moved out here, ended up in the mission. That's fantastic. So here, how does an aspiring actress end up at the University of San Francisco? Well, I had been working downtown at, um, it was called Entry Intermediaries, One Market Plaza. And for four years, I did the whole bus with the white sneaker routine. Everybody, when you see, you know, going downtown, everybody is hustling and bustling in their little sneakers and stuff. I did that for four years. And I thought, eh, I'm not happy. This is too much. Let me leave Entry. And I applied at USF, which I thought at the time, was UCSF, never heard, I had never heard of a, a Jesuit institution or college at that point, but I went ahead and I applied for the job and it was for the School of Education. And I felt like I, one, one interview, I felt like I was in front of a firing squad. I think there was five people from the Dean's office that interviewed me at one time. But needless to say, they liked me and I was hired on May 1st, 1984. So now you're, you're, you have a great role, you start, you start out uh, in education, then you move over to student affairs, which I think is a perfect fit for you, obviously, with students. Tell me about working with student affairs. I loved that job. So this would have been six years later. I stayed at School of Education six years, moved to student affairs. I was in charge of the University Center front desk which at the time was the information center. It was where the students gathered in the Perina Lounge. We handled all of um, Associated Students' events. It was a great time. That's fantastic. So you have a great successful run there. You, you change a lot of lives on the student side, and then you come over to athletics, and you become a part of the amazing growth of USF Athletics as you assisted in running the Green and Gold Club. What was that about? Greenville Club was, it was under Bill Henneberry. That was my first meeting with Bill Henneberry. Um, and we fell under, we were athletics development at the time. But our main goal back then was to raise 10 scholarships and to assist each individual sports with fundraising. Um, what started this was Bill Henneberry was really good friends with Pete Rozelle when Pete Rozelle was the um, SID for athletics. And through the years, they all stayed in touch. This is you know, with the 51, this is intertwined with the 51 team. And he came to Bill and said, let's put together a Super Bowl drawing. I'll give you the tickets and I'll give you two tickets to the, the actual big NFL party. Wow. So that's what started the Super Bowl drawing. And then we, of course, raised the level of it and added eight more sporting events. So we had the NCAA, we had the Final Four put in there. We had the Super Bowl, the, the Pro Bowl, all of these packages. For a raffle, pro, you know, for a raffle ticket, and we ended up raising about sixty thousand each year, sixty sixty five thousand each year, wow. towards scholarships. Well, let me ask you this: I heard a rumor. Were you a marshal in the nineteen ninety eight U.S. Open at the Olympic Club? <laughs> well, like I said, I didn't know. I didn't know a thing about golf tournaments, so I thought that if I volunteered and became a marshal for the U.S. <laughs> for the U.S. Open, I would learn more about the play of the land. How do you play golf? Why do you know, why is it called this? Why, what is a bogey and such? So um, being a marshal, you had to do it for three days. So I was, I was, 
I did it. I did it for three days. Um, there weren't many women at the time. It was a learning experience. I'm glad I did it. Um, it was totally out of my element. I learned 4A or something like this. Um, ball's coming, you know, is all I wanted to say. But um, it, was fu it was fun. And I did learn the game of golf, actually, through that experience. You know, your, your scope goes way beyond you know, uh, the Swanson Golf Tournament. You've organized a lot of other events. Tell me about those. I want to I wanna go back to the 51 Dons because we used to have a memorial luncheon called the Coheric, the Coheric Boys Luncheon and also the Jabashiani Luncheon. And it was more or less the same group of people. So we did a big merge. That helped us a lot. We merged the two memorials together. And every year we would have this Coheric Jabashiani Memorial Luncheon. <laughs> And that's where I met um, Fran and Al Ellsworth and Kiri Ellsworth. She was the, grand, the great niece of Father Chapasciani. And she had started a scholarship in honor of, um, she called them Unki, Unki. And I became so close to them. They were just natural down to earth people that they became part of my family. Um, we would, we would see each other. I was in the daughter's wedding as a reader, which I was so honored to do. Um, just a special, special relationship built from this memorial lunch. That's great. And I, and I know you've also pioneered the tip-off gala, the Hall of Fame dinners. You, you ran the club at basketball games, and you were uh, the star of the Vegas WCC tailgates when we had our, our, our tournament play in Las Vegas. You just had a whole lifetime of commitment to athletics, but you've also been an advocate for the athletes. And you always realized that honoring them was very important. I love being in meetings with you and you would always bring that up, how important it was to keep the tradition alive. In fact, you were the point person for your dear friend, Ollie Johnson's retirement ceremony. How special was that for you? So my husband growing up in the city, born and raised here, um, he followed you at basketball back then. Didn't when he was older, but he did when he was smaller, or younger. Not that much younger than than Ollie, though. So he would go to USF basketball games, and he always told me, always talked about Ollie Johnson. That was his favorite player. Wow. So one time, I think I arranged a meeting between him and Ollie, and it's like it's so cool because somebody you look up to and admire, and then you get to meet him. I think Aldo was was quite touched, but um, it was the retirement party for his jersey, we retired his jersey. And I loved, I, 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 don't, I like thinking of great things, different things. And it was just so special. We had a luncheon, um, we, we did a dinner before at Original Joe's, all his teammates got together the night before and what have you. Did this beautiful luncheon, Father Los Schiavo was there. They were very close. Um, it just turned out so nice. And then I think we ended the, the weekend with a mass. But um, I don't know, you get awe inspired when you're around people like this, you know? Um, he just always, he has the biggest smile. He always has such a beautiful smile. Well, I know he thinks, he thinks the world of you, as do many others. And, and with that being said, you've influenced uh, not only from the athletic side, you've, you've influenced generations of students. Uh, any great stories to share about the general generations that you have touched? Well... When I was at the School of Education, we had a pool of students and we had to share them. But this one guy kept coming back to me. His name was Mel. So I kind of like adopted him as my main student worker. Um, and he worked for me for four years at the School of Education. Uh, and then about, gosh, I want to say 20 years later, he gives me a call. He calls me up and he says, Julie, my daughter's coming to USF. Would you give her a job? Or would you at least talk to her? And I'm like, what? And I'm thinking to myself, Frank, how could that be? How could 20 years, how could you already have a daughter that's going to college? I just, you know, you're my student worker at school then. So anyways, I met her, I interviewed her and I thought, wow, if you're anything like your dad, you know, it, 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 it's a no brainer. So I hired his daughter and then, and I thought about it. And I, it's just like, how many people can say they were with one student worker in their lifetime in college and then their daughter or their son it's like two you know it's being involved in two generations so then i really thought maybe i was here you know at that point a while so let me ask you this what makes you so good at your job i love it always have um just so many memories um and i i guess like 
I'm personality A. I hate the I hate to say I'm personality A, but um, I just like things done and I like it done right as much as I can do it right and have it where have events where people want to come back again and again because they had such a good time. It uh, motivates my soul to do it. You know, I don't care how many hours I have to put in to an event, and there's been some weekend burners, especially with the golf tournament. But I just I want to see it. It makes me happy to see people happy. Mm -hmm. And God, you know, I know the end result is raising money. And hopefully, you know, over the years we have raised some money. But um, I just love where I work. I can't tell you enough. And that's probably why I'm still there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, Andy, and, and give, give me a crazy story of something. I know you pull out you pull out of the hat miracles you always find ways to get things done give me the craziest story that you ever executed something that was really wild now you put me on the spot frank um okay so i was working as scott's assistant scott sidwell our previous ad i was working as his assistant and that night we were having a special game because it was going to be announced by bill walton and that's, you know, I was okay with that. But Scott comes to me like at 10 in the morning and says, you need to find a tie dye shirt and it has to be green and gold and it has to have our logo on it. And I said, well, Scott, there is no such thing. We don't, we don't have that here. He goes, no, you're going to do it. You're going to go out and you're going to do it. So I, I palpitated a little bit and I thought, okay, this is a challenge. I'm up for a challenge. Got in my car, went down to the hate went to maybe two or three shops and lo and behold, there's my, there's my shirt, green and gold. And then I had to get another one for his, his co-anchor person or whatever, but that, that was not my problem. Anyways, I found the green and gold shirt. I come back to the university. No, wait, I'm sorry. I go to the office max or one of those places. And I get on the iron on sheets of paper that you use. I had somebody in community relations in our department um, send me a logo that was huge. Cause you know, it was a huge shirt. They sent me the logo. I transferred it onto the, the paper, the iron transfer paper. Voila, in like two hours, I had a pretty cool tie-dye USF shirt. I've got pictures of it somewhere. And he loved it. He totally loved it. He was so impressed, so surprised that we would do something that nice for him. Because that's his, I guess, Bill Walton has this obsession with tie-dye shirts. And he probably wears it to this day. I probably, I'm sure he does. G give me another great story if you have one that sticks out in your mind. It's a great accomplishment. A Julie, a kanji coup. A kanji coup. Uh, you can never tell me never. <laughs> Don't ever tell me I can't do something because I'll show you how it's done. But um, I think one of them was we wanted Coach Steve Kerr for a tip-off the tip-off dinner that we were having that year and unfortunately their schedule always crossed ours when we were doing tip-off dinners so he couldn't come to do the dinner i'm like well okay what's the next best thing let's go to him so katie morgan and i went to the um the warriors training um facility in oakland and i brought a bottle of champagne i brought a, a champagne glass it was actually seven up um, and we went in there and we got to watch for a while the, the practice that was going on. And, you know, you, you try not to like stare down what's a uh, Curry or, you know, all of those guys. Um, and Steve Kerr had to have been the most down to earth, yeah. nicest guy I've ever met in my life. He made it, he took my nerves away and um, did a really nice speech for us. Toasted, toasted the women's and men's season coming up. Um, and we added that into the show in the very beginning. That was the opening of the show. So I was pretty proud of that because here's Steve Kerr on film, you know, toasting to the dons. Um, it was just something I was so proud of. Something I was so proud of. Love it. You know, when I, when I think of USF and our all commitment to change the world from here, you, you talk about servants uh, of service. I mean, you are the definition of this. You, you've been a friend a sister, a mother. In fact, you, you mentioned earlier the kids called you Mama Jules. Uh, what advice would you give to others who might be leaving downtown and coming up to the hilltop to start their careers? I would just say if you love the place where you work, um, then give back to that place that you love. Um, I feel I have. I'm a legacy uh, member. And 
I think through all my years, um, if it's Thanksgiving food drive or whatever, I've always given back because they've given so much to me. USF has really given so much to me. I'll always be thankful for that. Yeah. Well, and, and we are thankful for the impact that you've had and will continue to have. In conclusion of this Tuesday testimonial, I ask one simple question. Almost four decades of service. Why are you still here? It's my second home. It's, it's my USF. I don't want to sound so cliche, but um, it really is a community, a family. Um, we take care of each other, and that's how it should be. Um, so I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be around. I'm only, I don't know, six blocks away. And um, if you ever need that question answered on who was who, blah, 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 who did what and went where, I'm here because it's hard to cut the ties that bind. And um, I don't know. I, I will see you around. I'll see everybody around. And uh, go Dons. <laughs> oh, and it's going to be good to see you at the club level at games and not have to worrying about is everybody taken care of let us take care of you uh and, and we really appreciate you and your love one of the most loved people to ever uh, grace the hilltop julie i want to conclude just by thanking you for your time and for the difference you have made in 36 years of dedication and commitment here at usf you've been an amazing ambassador uh, the strongest link of love in the USF unity chain. As you said, you're going to miss us. We're going to miss you more than you ever know, but I'm sure you'll always be here standing with us and your unrivaled commitment to change the world from here. Thank you, Julie Kanji. Thanks, Frank, for having me.